Hey guys, Josh the RV Nerd here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan. I want to take a minute to talk today about residential refrigerators in an RV versus the traditional gas and electric refrigerator in an RV. Which one's better? Um, as with most things that I seem to hit on, the answer is it depends. And that's this is a really interesting conversation because it seems like every time the RV industry comes up with a solution, we're also creating new problems. Um, you know, the residential refrigerator thing just sort of just exploded recently the last couple of years. And it's, uh, I, I understand, the, it, it meets the customer uh, cry, outcry for larger cold storage capacity. They're physically bigger. You can just store more in them. Like this is a big 23 cubic foot and it's stainless steel, it's modern. And we keep wanting to convince ourselves that these things are homes. Well, it literally has the word residential in it. But remember, this is a recreational vehicle, not a residential vehicle. Um, there, there are times where this is good and there are times where this is not as good. Um, so, so how do we kind of break that down? And unfortunately, this is one of those things that we really had to learn from some hard nose experience. Um, you know, there's, there's no such thing as too much storage in an RV. And when it comes to cold storage, that's definitely also true. There's, I don't care how big the fridge is. I know people that will find a way to pack that thing full, but the, the hang up here is again, it is a residential refrigerator. These are not like shock and impact rated. Have you guys, have have you ever had the experience where you go to Sears and you buy a new refrigerator, even though it's in the box with all of the packaging? What do they tell you? The first thing they say is, do not put this in the back of your pickup and haul it home. Even though you're just across town, there's a good chance that you're gonna shock and wiggle something loose. It's not made for that. What do you think an RV is, kids? This is literally a rolling earthquake. I, I, and literally, they've put instrumentation in RVs, pulled it around a testing track, and, and registered like four on a Richter scale, effectively. Uh, literal earthquake equivalent forces here. This is not made for that. It, there's just a far greater likelihood of failure. It's not to say that the gas electric RV traditional fridge can't fail. This is far more likely though. Now when I say that, I don't mean some crazy number like 75% of the residential refrigerators are gonna fail. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is even if it's like 10 or 15%, which is about what we've seen, they're, they're not made for that. We are actively moving away from this thing at our dealership in, in, more, uh, in a lot of cases. It depends on the floor plan. We're really looking at things. We're saying, is this a traveler's floor plan or is this going to be a parked floor plan? And, and there's, no, there's no rule for that. It is all the swag system. We're just guessing, but it's a lot of experience that goes into that. So I guess the way it kind of boils down for me is if you're going to be parked, if you're not going to move, like let's say maybe you just go, like you're a snowbird. Okay, that's real common in my neck of the woods. You go from Michigan to Florida for seasonality. This thing's going to be fine. Most of the time, it's going to be parked. You're probably going to be just fine. Most of your travel's going to be highway-ish. And I know everyone's like, oh, there can be potholes on the highway. Yeah, but not. it's not going to be terrible. Most of the time, it's brief shocks and you're back to smooth sailing. If you're going to be towing and going and touring and rambling and gambling, I, I can't recommend uh, getting away from this thing enough. I think you, you most definitely want to be gas and electric that way. These things have an inverter. They can run going down the road. They don't run well. They run like, they'll maintain temp, but this is a very high voltage appliance. The, the, the little bit you're getting back from the battery, even with that inverter, it's enough to like kick the compressor on and just enough to make it maintain. You know, like if you lose power in your house and you got to get in the fridge, you, you open it real quick, you grab something, you close the door real fast. That's kind of what we're talking about here when it's on inverter mode. I've seen some funny stats where uh, someone says, you know, well, a residential refrigerator can last tw uh, up to 24 hours running on the inverter off just the battery. Yeah, right. Maybe in a lab environment when nothing is hooked up to those two batteries except just this thing. But this is not the only thing hooked up to this thing. 
you guys have to understand uh it, it's like the reason these big fifth wheels and big rvs with lots of fancy electronics this the reason they have a battery disconnect switch is because nothing turns off this stuff goes into standby the refrigerator the water heater the tv the dvd player every thing in this has a circuit board that goes into standby low power use not no power use really important difference so I found out that we're uncommon in big fifth wheels that we set people up with two batteries in our starter packages. I I don't know. I can't believe that's not more common. But uh, I, I still wouldn't put the two batteries we use. And we use larger batteries on these big things, even though it, it, with two of them, I still wouldn't say, oh, you're going to be fine for 24 hours. And by the way, 24 hours, not a lot. A lot of people who leave their RV park seasonally, they'll get back to it next weekend. What if you lost power Tuesday? It's toast. Everything in here just as toast. Steaks, burger, egg, milk, gone. All of it, gone. The gas electric fridge, made for RVs. The It's called an RV refrigerator, you know. It'll kick over to gas automatically. One of the reasons that we got really tuned into this is because, uh, um, not just myself, but like our owner, Mr. Halet, he's a big fifth wheel person. Uh, he had a seasonal site in South Haven, Michigan, and they lost power up there. And they lost everything in their refrigerator because they're like, they were on that new wave cusp of, oh, let's just get the big fancy stainless steel fridge with all the huge storage. They lost everything. They they lost everything. Now, you know, stuff can be replaced, but you don't want to. You went to that RV site that weekend expecting your stuff to be here because you had grilling and chilling in mind. You didn't have... Crap, now we got to go to the store and restock our entire refrigerator with hundreds of dollars of stuff. That's not what your plan was. It was supposed to be a fun, relaxing weekend. And you got to start it by cleaning out the the thawed burger juice <laughs> from, from uh, the top of the egg carton because it dripped all over everything. That's how you got to start your weekend. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that's what you were looking forward to. So, if you're going to be traveling... Guys, I just can't recommend enough the gas and electric RV refrigerator. There's, you know, two-door, eight-cubic, ten-cubic foot models. So you don't see the tens much. They're, the first four-door one you see is a 12-cubic foot. That's plenty. Um, if uh, some of these new things like the new big Montanas and stuff like that, they've got these four-door, 18-cubic foot gas electrics. That's absolutely awesome. That's bigger than a lot of uh, electric-only refrigerators that you see out there. The only thing bigger is this 23 cubic foot. That's not a lot of extra cold storage when you consider the, the, the chance you're taking at losing all of it, you know? So, if you are going to travel and you say, I don't care, I don't care, Baldy, I need all the storage I can get. Great, great, get that gas electric. Live your dream. Go have a good time. God bless you, great American, Canadian, wherever you're from, you know. But consider this really well. If you're going to be towing and going a lot, get that gas and electric. And even if you're just going to be seasonal, if you want that assurance, that extra good protection against power outages and stuff, the gas and electric is still a great way to go. It's one of those things where things have a way of coming back around. And it's not that these things are terrible. It's just that there, there's less chance of wiggle room, failure, uh, flexibility, you know. Um, another, oh man, I should have thought of this sooner. Servicing these things, um, for lack of a better phrase, sucks. Servicing these, uh, these electric-only residential refrigerators absolutely sucks. One of the things I want to point out, I didn't do a good job of this. Hold on, let me point this down. You see where this uh, refrigerator kind of bumps the island right there? Well, even when this slide is all the way out, which it's not currently, you pretty much have to remove the island to get this thing out. And the problem is, these things require special certified people to work on them. I At our dealership, at Halo RV, we absolutely pride ourselves on servicing what we sell and a little bit of everything else too. Um, you know, the, the phrase that we have is uh, our uh, the, the dealer down the street who literally has no service base, his best two service bays are my last two warranty bays. We take care of stuff. We are not some wholesale buy it and fly it dealer. 
Not in the slightest. I've got more techs than I have service bays, and I've got like nine service bays. Um, my point here is despite having all these facilities, they say we're not qualified to do, to, to do stuff on these. We don't have the certifications or licensing or whatever you want to call it. So this thing now has to go through another layer of BS to get fixed, which is delaying your camping season. I, I mean, I'm not trying to sound hard slanted against these. Again, if you're going to be at a park, that's great. But these things are not the be all end all solution that you're being led to believe they are. And I don't mind being the one guy that goes against the grain to share about that. I don't mind working at the one dealership that doesn't. This might cost us sales. The way that we're going to start stocking things with fewer and fewer of these, because more and more people are wanting to travel right now, it might cost us sales because people are going to say, oh, no, 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 I need the bigger fridge. And I'm fine with that because we're not going to have to wrench on these things. And we're not going to be uh, the guys that have to look at you while you're not camping while they're getting fixed. And again, that is not the majority of cases, but it's enough that we feel this strongly about it, that we're moving away from these things to a pretty good extent. So um, they're not always wrong. They are sometimes very right, but it's case by case. And if you're not sure, that gas and electric's not a bad way to go. Again, I, I've kind of come off as very negative slanted against these, but I'm trying to open some eyes here. I'm trying to share good information because this is true whether you buy from me or not. I don't care where you live. The advice I just shared, the, the theory that we just passed along is true seven days a week, no matter where you call home. It doesn't matter if you buy from me or not, it's still true. Keep that stuff in mind when you're making your decisions, guys. If you're not sure, if you'd like to learn more, then give us a call. 800-256-5196. We're Halet RV, Coldwater, Michigan, family owned and operated. Um, you know, my brother's our service manager. That's why we're so in tune with this. My, <laughs> my dad is Mr. Halet. We've got different last names for a couple of you. Have, oh, how's your dad hail it when you're a winter? So he married my mother and he's a good guy. So, you know, I'm happy he's dad. But he, uh, you know, he fifth wheel camps. My brother's the guy that has to service these. and But I'm the guy that needs to educate you on them. That's my role here. I want to make sure that you're taken care of before, during, and after the sale. Even if you don't buy from us, I want you to know. So take care, stay safe, have fun. Happy camping, everyone.